Am I the only one that has a habit of maxing out the amount of characters that I have in the Dragon Age games only to have to delete some of them to make room for new ones? Is that just me? Maybe? Maybe there's someone else out there that does that? I have so many characters throughout all three games, it's not even funny. <laughs> Welcome, and happy Dragon Age Day! Welcome everybody, it is Dragon Age Day. I want to focus on, well, ranking my protagonists through all three games. That has become a challenge, and my cat is here to say hello. <laughs> I have over 20 characters throughout all, with all three games, like, and that's, that's with me deleting several characters. <laughs> so, several. Particularly in Dragon Age Inquisition. Um, I had started this project of mine maybe two or three weeks ago and I just finally like yesterday <laughs> was able to actually rank at least my top 10. I have them all ranked but I just want to go with the top 10 because again a majority like a lot of the uh characters I don't actually have footage for so or even pictures so without further ado Let's get into it. I am going to go from 10 down to 1. Alright, so in my 10th spot is Nolani Braska. She is the castless, and she's forced into basically a life of petty crime, committing murders for the crime lord Barat who she cannot stand. She hates the way he treats her sister. She loves her sister. Her sister's really the only family that she has because her mother's a piece of shit. <laughs> and, um, but what else is she supposed to do? She's stuck and there's not, like she can't do much. So when she ends up going into the proving and basically impersonating a warrior <laughs> from a warrior class, and she wins, and then she gets caught because the cast lists are not allowed to participate in the proving, and she gets arrested. Yeah, and she has that opportunity to join Duncan and the Grey Wardens. She takes it, and she doesn't want to leave her sister, but she also has to do what she has to do. All right, so number nine. Karas Adar. My male canary rogue archer inquisitor who also romances dorian so here's the story behind karas i adore dorian i love him so much i just i just adore him i don't know a whole lot of people who don't like dorian but i love him and uh karas has a good sense of humor and he really cares very deeply about dorian he loves Dorian the way he is. He doesn't wish to change him in any sort of way. And um, he develops a friendship with him, you know, and then they become lovers and whatnot. And it's just, I love that whole romance. It's just, it's, I find it very, uh, just endearing. It's just, it's another sweet romance I, that I really enjoy. And he's handsome. I actually am a little jealous of Dorian because he's handsome. I, I made I made myself a good one. I cannot wait to bring him to PC. I cannot wait. He's exciting. He's fun. I'm going to have a lot of fun with that one. <laughs> Kendall Serana. So I play her as like she, she was in the alienage in general until she was about six years old when she developed magic and then she was sent to the tower. And she's been in the tower ever since. The tower is the only place she's ever known. It's her only home. She gets along with most people there. 
Uh, the first enchanter took her under his wing, uh, you know, from an early age. And uh, she is aware that there are Templars that abuse people in the tower, abuse the mages. She has not seen it. She has not witnessed it. She has been pretty pr protected. And she even falls in love with Cullen. She has a secret affair with him and all that stuff. And it's really nice. I love it. Um, Cullen is one of those people that I've wanted to romance since Dragon Age Origins. So when I have the opportunity to put the mod in to romance him, that uh, yeah, I'm taking that. I'm taking that opportunity. <laughs> so she does that. And then she also, she, she even though Jowin's her friend... She knows that she she respects the senior enchanter Irving too much. She appreciates him. She's got um she's got an admiration and respect for Irving that Alistair has for Duncan. He's like a f sort of a father figure to her. So she has so she's willing to do what he asks her to do as far as Jowen is concerned. And she goes and she does all that stuff with Jowen and she gets him caught. And then the Templars want to punish her. And she's a little confused because she did what she was told to do, basically. So it, you know, she feels a little betrayed at that point. And, um, and it's also the first time that she's actually seeing for herself how the Templars can be very quick to judge without um they make a lot of assumptions and they make a lot of judgments on the fly so that was a little jarring for her but then duncan steps in and he recruits her into the gray wardens and then she leaves and she's gotta leave the only home she's ever known and it's a little sad and it's a little and then she's got to say goodbye to colin and she's most likely never going to see him again. And um, yeah, she's she's torn up about it. And she's a little heartbroken over everything. And um, But she's going to set onto this new path with Duncan. And she doesn't know what to expect. And uh, she, she just takes herself in there. And she does what she does. And then, you know, the Grey Wardens and the King get betrayed and it's a lot to take in. It's a lot to deal with when you have grown pr grown up pretty sheltered. So, like, it's like the real world's hitting. There are these things that are happening that are not good and she she is a lot to take, to take in for that and learn a lot. Adeline Hawk. Now, Adeline Hawk is my asshole. <laughs> She's my asshole character. She's got a chip on her shoulder like no end. She <laughs> um, She's not having shit. She is, like, not having it. She doesn't have time for people's games. She doesn't have time for Carver's bullshit. Okay? And, um... She's actually a little resentful towards her two siblings. And even she loves her sister and and whatnot. And, she, you know, and she does protect her and everything. But, you know, she's a little resentful towards it because she doesn't feel like she gets the appreciation for being, you know, able to look out for her and whatnot. And, um, but with Carver, that's a little bit more. You know, her and Carver do not get along because all he does is bitch and whine about how she's the oldest and she gets all the perks of being the oldest. But he has no idea what it means to be the oldest. And for me, as the oldest sibling of four, yeah, I get where she's I love my siblings. I love my siblings. But I kind of channel that into Adeline. Uh, especially when it comes to Carver. <laughs> because... She's also, she was on the front lines at Ostagar. She was fighting on the front lines. She was near the king. She wasn't next to him, but she was near him. And uh, she saw what happened. Uh, she didn't see everything with Ter with uh, Terran Loghain, but she found out afterwards. And she's pretty pissed. 
She was pretty pissed about it. And um, a lot of people died. And, you know, and then being forced to have to run for their lives from the Darkspawn, you know, because of what, you know, Macely, the way she sees it, it because of what Loghain did. Um, she doesn't trust anybody. She's very, very uh, skittish about trusting anybody, including Varric, who I love so, so much. I love Varric, but the way I play her is that she's distrustful of everyone. Now, the next one is my current playthrough that I'm going through right now and is my Let's Play here on YouTube. I believe the you can, you can view that up here somewhere uh, to see her, her uh, if you want to watch the Let's Play of my female canary mage Tavishoth Raquel Adar she's romancing the iron bull because of course and uh she's got a great sense of humor she's she doesn't take a whole lot of things very seriously but she knows when to toe the line she you know as a leader of a mercenary band she knows when to crack it crack that whip and put people in line and say what she needs to say. <laughs> um, all right. So this one is my canon for Dragon Age Inquisition. Uh, her name is Alara Lavellan. And she is my Dalish mage. And I really enjoy. She was the first one that I played when I got on PC and um i streamed her last year and i had a lot of fun uh she's an open-minded person and she she still uses her diplomacy to try to get herself out of the mess um and then she ends up with this mark and it's <laughs> she doesn't know why and you know that's fun that's interesting and she's she's a little confused but she she goes along with it and she just tries to get everyone to kind of play nice with each other and um you know and of course she falls in love with colin and there's that so that is alara lavellen and how i play her peyton idukin from dragon age origins peyton is another sort of ass if you will not completely like adeline but again with the whole sibling stuff again i relate um she's betrayed by her younger brother she didn't get along with her older brother and she's betrayed and she's basically essentially sentenced to death you know sent into the deep roads to basically fight until she's killed and, um, it's kind of sad. And then she, you know, she grew up a noble and she loves her father, but she feels a bit slighted by her father for believing the lies. And, um, she's hell bent on getting revenge someday against her brother, her surviving brother, who kills her older brother and frames her for the murder. So she's not happy. She's not a happy person, but she does find Duncan in the Deep Roads, and she becomes a Grey Warden. She She's fun, and she does get revenge on her brother. And yes, I know, Paramount is not the better ruler than Balin. It's not about that. See, she's, she's willing to do whatever she needs to do to get shit done, but that doesn't necessarily mean she's making the best decisions, right? And she's still, at the end of the day... She owes her brother some revenge. And she deserves to get that. That's the way she sees it. That is how she looks at it. So yeah. She chooses Haramount as king. And she ends up getting to kill her brother. So now she's actually finally guilty of killing one of her brothers. <laughs> so uh, it's all about the revenge angle. And that's how I play her. I mean, it's all about the revenge. So, yeah. <laughs> Number three. Number three is my canon hawk in Dragon Age 2. The sassy, humorous, sarcastic mage who doesn't always know when to not joke. <laughs> <laughs> mm 
not everybody gets her jokes. And uh, Varric is probably the only one who really gets her humor. <laughs> she loves Varric. And, uh, and she also sees Fenris as a challenge because of his loathing for mages and magic and his distrust of mages and rightfully so with his background and his trauma. But she sees him at first as a challenge and she wants to, she wants to see if she can change his mind or at least open up his mind a little more. Um... She's determined to show him that not all mages are the same. And, you know, and they end up falling in love with each other. And it's one of my favorite romances in all of the series. It's one of my favorites. I love Fenris. Fenris is awesome. So she is my number three slot. All right. So we're getting down to it. Now, between one and two... I had a hard time deciding because I knew I both I wanted them both... But when it came down to which one I really, really enjoyed playing, I will get to that. So my number two is actually my... She's also the very first character that I ever played in Dragon Age. My very first one. And the reason that I chose her is because um, my husband at the time that we <laughs> that this game came out had told me if you play as a human and you romance Alistair you get to become queen and I was sold sold okay I want to be queen <laughs> so I went with it and uh I romanced him successfully which was easier than I thought it would be um and uh but I also was really drawn to her story the, the tragedy that happens with her family, all her whole family being murdered, and she's another character that where vengeance is a top priority. Now, of course, she's a noble, and she was raised to have manners and respect and be diplomatic when it needs to be, but... Um, when it comes to a certain character who is responsible for the death of her family, all of that goes out the window. All of it. And she is determined to get to him. And when she finally gets her revenge, it is sweet. It's bittersweet, but it's sweet. But she is in my number two spot. She is in my number two spot because there is another character, a Dragon Age Origins character. That I found myself most attached to. Out of all of the characters through Dragon Age. The one that I found the most compelling. And that is Ember Tabris. My city elf two-handed warrior. And she has definitely got vengeance on her mind. And she is also... Another one who, again, don't play her as much of an asshole as Adeline in Dragon Age 2, but she's got some issues. <laughs> uh, and rightfully so. She is not like humans. She does not trust humans. She does not like them. And her mother was killed by humans. So she lost her mother. And then on her wedding day, which she is reluctant to have because she is not interested in marriage. She's definitely not interested in an arranged marriage. It's not her thing. Um, but on her wedding day, her and her cousin and several bridesmaids and the other bride are kidnapped by the human lord's son. So I think he's technically a lord as well. And uh, they're kidnapped and with the intention of all of them being assaulted and while she is herself not assaulted she watches her groom be murdered in front of her eyes she watches one of the bridesmaids also be murdered and she's getting angrier and angrier and she has to fight her way she has to find her cousin uh shiani 
and uh, she's trying to get to her, and she has to fight her way through all of the guards in the castle to get to her cousin, but by the time she gets there, she's technically too late because her cousin has been assaulted. And it's a huge trauma, and it's something that I take personal for my personal life because I am a survivor. So I, I connect to Ember in a huge way. I connect to Shiani in a huge way. But I connect to Ember in the way that, like, she took it, she took that responsibility to try to protect her cousin. She took that responsibility to try to, to, to get her to safety. And there's a, there's a certain level of guilt that happens when you're trying to protect someone you love and then you're not able to for whatever reason. And they end up getting harmed anyway. There's a lot of guilt there. And it makes her even angrier. And yes, Hell yes, I kill that guy. I forget his name. <laughs> Vaughn. She falls in love with Zevran. Zevran is very interesting and very intriguing. And he comes from a completely different lifestyle. And she's just all about learning about that. So yeah, that is my top 10. And I've talked for quite a while now. <laughs> So thank you guys for listening to this long ramble. And um, I'm also going to leave a short, uh, I think it's like a minute and a half, maybe two minute, a uh, little music video. It's going to show my characters, but it's also going to show a few that did not make the top 10. Again, I don't have um, images or footage of a lot of my characters, of most of them, because most of them are from the Xbox. Uh, I am planning to rectify that within the next year and a half by putting them all on to PC and getting plenty of footage. So, <laughs> but thank you all for watching. Thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you for listening. And um, again, put your hand up, thumbs up or whatever to in the comments below if you are also one of those people like me that deleted characters to make new ones. <laughs> like to know I'm not alone on that and um let me know what your favorite who are your favorite it's really hard and let's acknowledge that it is really hard to decide between your own characters which ones are your favorites but if you have favorites with all three games if you have favorites put them down below let me know and again keep this light keep it simple keep it fun and I just want to keep a very positive vibe that is what we do here. So please, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, check out my uh, Raquel playlist if you want. I'm still in the middle of that playthrough. We're having fun there. That's it. Happy Dragon Age Day again, guys. Bye now. <laughs>